So I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uncertainty at work. Um, like if I started a, a, a new job, uh, let, let's take it to the observer, then I'd always be trying to uh, transcend any attachments or any what I call hooks, anything my ego is finding uh, is taking me out of being in the, in, uh, in the observer or being in the field of just pure presence. So it could be like, uh, you know, the boss is giving me approval, you know, and then, you know, like if suddenly my ego becomes activated, like the boss sort of says, like, that's a great job. And then some, it's like something activates within the ego and wants to say, oh, how great I am, or I need to get more, I need to do more to get to make him to like, like me more. Then immediately if that was to happen, I would ask, you know, uh, what's observing this? What's observing my thoughts of wanting more approval? Mm -hmm. And what's and if there, an energy came up, like, I don't know, it could be the fear or craving. I guess fear or craving, like fear that maybe the next job I do may not be good. Without, or it could be craving, like I want him to say that for every job and say more for the next job. So these thoughts and these energies may come up. So then that's the, that, that then is the experiencing of the separated ego. So those thoughts and hooks start to become activated uh, and they go into thoughts and then also there can be an energy. There might be an energy of uh, craving or there might be an energy of fear or even excitement. You know, you got a, just got a compliment, you know, it works good. So again, those are the, you know, with the observer, those are the things that we do to uh, investigate who am I or what am I. Because now the sense of I is these emotions and these thoughts. So because, uh, because identification has occurred with thoughts and feelings, now because whenever there's identification with something which is limited, i.e. thoughts are limited, uh, images are limited, uh, f uh, feelings that arise within the body are limited, even the sense of body is limited. As soon as identification, i.e. interest, goes to this, then it creates the sense of the limited self that sense of infinite presence dissipates now because that so so okay so as soon as that as soon as identification occurs with those thoughts you know the also you know if it did occur then that would mean many things it would mean that the boss's words and the boss has special significance yeah mm -hmm. so i could say like you know any time the boss walks past then because he's he has some kind of meaning to the ego some kind of uh, importance. So I could say, like, every time what's past, like, what's observing this, the feeling of giving him importance? Why is he more important than his chair? Like, if there's pure observing of this table and this room, then if a person walks past, that should not stop. You know, but if suddenly attention or identification is going with the person, then, like, okay, what's observing that attention or that projection or specialness? You see, also if if you're in the pure observer or the inf or the or the timeless presence, and suddenly a seemingly event, because in truth no events occur, it's only like time can only exist if there's identification with time. Otherwise, it's timeless right now. Um, a per person walking past right now can only exist if there was attention or identification. Otherwise, nothing nothing's happening right now. You see, so so if one is like just if one is just just in the observer and things are just unfolding out of the observer intuitively, spontaneously, and then suddenly there's ego identification, like this individual walks past, then this sen there's a sense of limitation. However, that limitation experienced, one then uses that as an investigation for what is observing this sense of limitation. What's observing, for example, what's observing the interest in the manager? Or what's observing this feeling of excitement that's suddenly arisen? Again, if suddenly this, you know, a compliment is given and excitement arises, and this is, this is picked up as an event, or picked up as self, the ego self, limited self, then one can ask, well, what's observing that? And as soon as you cut the identification or the interest that's going to these which are different types of form, you know, images of form, 
uh, language is form, uh, thoughts are form, then you, one detaches from that and one is again in the pure observing field. So you keep doing that. The other thing is, like, in the pure observing field or in the timeless presence, everything is always complete. Like, this moment is complete. So when there's pure completeness, there cannot be indecision. Indecision cannot exist unless there is some subtlety of holding on to something, you know, or there's some need to control the future or some distrust of what will happen in the future or some need for some analysis now and that's human but then that's a great that's a great thing to do self-inquiry on like why cannot why if I'm like having to decide between do I stay in this job or do I take another job if that keeps going on constantly then you know like well whatever it is you can inquire on it so if there's a sense of indecision right now, should I stay in this job or should, like, should I go into it? Like, what's observing the indecision? How do I experience indecision? Is it a feeling? Is it like a mental process? But what's observing that indecision? As if it was an object. So what's observing that? And it, the observer of how the indecision is experienced, is the observer, uh, does the observer experience indecision? Now, if the observer has uh, interest in, what, in, in the emotion of the thoughts, then that's what I call an interested observer. So it has some kind of relationship. It's not a pure observing field. So then there must be an observer of the interested observer. And usually if you do that, and you keep doing that with the indecision, then it should eventually, it would be a great thing to do to just release it, you see. And then it's like, and then one can be just present, you see, or you can just be present and you've just basically surrendered. You've surrendered that need to decide. So every moment is just complete now, you see. So that also will take you to a higher vibration because you're no longer having that subtlety of indecision and needing to know what the future is. And that will then mean that things will unfold better. So, you know, things may, mystical things may happen, like, uh, you know, it's suddenly revealed that the job is not right, or an, an offer comes, and uh, or you know, mystical things happen. Like I've had, when you clear something totally, then often uh, I've had people suddenly, like you know, I had uh, there was this person in a spiritual group I went to where I, they had conflict with this person. I had to do all the spiritual stuff, the observer, the course in miracles, forgiveness, and then I felt the energy leave me. And I went to that spiritual group, and I, I wasn't talking to them, but the individual came up to me on the day that the vibration had gone. I'd cleared up that uh, uh, vibration of uh, resentment. And the person came up to me and said, uh, Sabir, you taught me, and she just, you know, we hadn't really spoken one-to-one -one for very long. Sabir, you taught me a great lesson, I'm um, leaving the country. So that's how, you know, that job will get automatically resolved. So, in that way. I, I